Hello, this is Rabbi Bolton speaking from Yeshiva Ortaminin. This is the third day that we're learning the Mimer called Batilagani. Third day, right? Fourth day. We're learning the Mimer Batilagani. <coughs> and this Mimer of Batilagani is the last Mamar. Mamar means a, a Hasidic uh, speech, if you want to call it, an essay that was to be said by the previous Lubavitcher Rebbe, Rabbi Yosef Yitzchak. <clears throat> and, ben, and that day he passed away from this world. It really, tzaddikim, righteous people, really never leave the world. In fact, after they pass away, they're even more here in the world than ever. Which we're going to be celebrating tonight, the passing of the first Rebbe of Chabad, the one who wrote the Tanya Rebbe Shneri's moment. But here the Rebbe left us uh, the instructions what to do when he's not here visibly. Or even more, what to do when Hashem is not here visible. When God is not here visible. God's never visible, right? It's wrong. The person can understand Hashem and can grasp Hashem and come close to Hashem. Of course, not totally. But when a person does understand a little bit about Hashem, he starts to feel meaning. He starts to feel happiness. He starts to feel excitement, <clears throat> love, and fear of truth, of being close to the Creator. Life suddenly starts to have purpose and meaning in the world, but you can't see it with your physical eyes, only with your mental eyes, intellect. With your, how do you say, your power of conception, that's called Chachma in Hebrew. With your power of understanding, that's called Bina. And with your power of realization, which is called Ta'at. That's Chabad Hasidim, to give people the proper concept, understanding, and realization of what is God, what is a Jew, what is the world, what is the Torah. So, Right now we've learned that every single Jew is a holy temple. And that every single Jew has to bring his own sacrifices. And the word sacrifice here does not mean to kill yourself. It means to come close. Korban is from the language of korov, to be near to Hashem. How can you become near to Hashem? So the Rebbe is explaining, it says every single person can do it. And every single person, first of all, has... An animal. Your animal is yourself, your ego, your natural automatic feelings. Oh, how do you say just do it? Of just being your natural animal self. How do you bring this natural animal close to God? I mean, a natural animal cannot be close to God. A natural animal just is close to nature. It's part of the creation. How can you get close to the Creator? Well, a regular animal can't do it. But when there was the Holy Temple, as Jews could actually take animals and make them close to God. And similarly, now we can take our own animal and make it closer to God by means of doing what? <clears throat> we'll see, by thinking properly. Maybe thinking properly, that's going to be the answer. By using our Chachma Binadas, by using our concept, power of conception and understanding to try to conceive of and to understand and to realize God the way the Rebbe's do. That's the purpose of Abraham, the purpose of Moses, is to bring these ideas down to us. So, Vezehu, and this is that everybody has a different type of animal soul. Some people have an animal soul like a goat, and some people like a bird, and some people like a cow, like a sheep. Vezehu, and this is, see where we are? The last word on the line is Sha'omar. It is about 10 lines from the bottom of the page. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 11. What is from the bottom? I think we're going to that. We didn't get to that. No? No, we're by small, the line above. Oh. Uh Behema Keda. Deka. The beginning of that line. Behu Behema Daka, right? It's in the middle of the line. The beginning of the line says, Gasot. Gasot, right. Yes. Okay, good. Some people have an animal soul, have a personality, natural personality which is like a Goran ox. Very, very coarse. Okay, go. Yes? First word line is Gasso. Where is it here? 
Alright, which is coarse God, coarse God so means very coarse, very thick. You know, very much. Those, there are some people who always think about themselves and no one is going to stand in my way. And there are those Shahu who are so on, sheep. <coughs> some people don't have animals like a sheep. Shahu, <coughs> which is Behemadaka, which you, is a. If you, have, if you have an animal, so on top of like an animal. Like a animal. Just one second, one second, let me just finish this. Who, which is Behemadaka, a small animal, a fine animal. Oh, by the way, I want to make an announcement of how we're going to learn from now on. I just got this idea. This means you know. We're going to see. Af, even though. Uh, Af, awesome. even though. Okay. Even though. Shagam, that also. Ze, this, a, a sheep, is also, if you have an animal soul, like a sheep, and it's a personality, your animal soul is, your, is you, is your personality. <clears throat> Even that if you have an animal soul like a sheep, it doesn't make you so much trouble. Ze, this is Bichlal in the category. Behema of a animal. An animal doesn't understand God, doesn't care what it just does what it does, it doesn't have to make any choices, it just does it. So you also have one part of yourself that says, don't make any choices, just feel natural, do what's natural. Avalbat, so there's some part of you that says be natural, but it's a nice animal soul. Gets along with other people, gets along with rabbis, gets along with everyone. Sounds like me. Oh, but who it is, Betakut, it is very fine, I did say very small animal, an easy animal. I'll call upon it, in any case. Does it sit straight in the distance? Docile? Huh? Docile? Like docile, okay, if you want to say docile. Right? Easy going. Sometimes that's the worst. Sometimes you get a person you say, would you like to put on tefillin, sir? Are you Jewish? The person says, what do you care if I'm Jewish? What do you care if I'm doing mind your own business? I am, you know, I'm, I'm Jewish. I just want to find the people Jewish. It's a good thing, you know, for me. I, I'm just offering you, you know, like saying, are you hungry, sir? You know, would you like to buy a sandwich? You don't want to buy it. You don't have to buy it. Are you Jewish, sir? So what? Yes, I am. Want to put on tefillin? No, I don't want to put on. It's idolatry. I'm not going to put on a person like that who's against you. He's got energy, right? A person like that says, well, you know, would you like to talk about it? You know, Jews have been putting on the film for 3,300 years. You want to say they've all been wrong. Everybody's wrong, right? Maybe there's something to it. Do you know anything, one positive thing about putting on the film? I don't know what I don't want to know. I just get away and leave me alone. That, 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 that's that. You know, be logical. Come on, a little bit. You know, okay, if you don't want to talk, all right. You know, a person like that, you can get him into the conversation. Another person says, well, hello, so would you like to put on the film? Okay, oh, I haven't got time now, maybe later. He's not interested. He doesn't care one way or another. He just wants to be a nice guy. You know. So some people like that is very nice. You know, they'll put on the film, but they'll never do it again. I just do whatever comes along, like a sheep. You know, I put on, I don't put on, put on the film. You know, I'm religious, I'm not religious. Okay, it's nice, right? But, but, but still, that's not, a person hasn't got, has to have a, a desire to find out what the truth is, to raise up. Right? The reason, if it's not true, then don't do it. You know, if the filling is not the truth, and the whole Torah is just made up by somebody, then don't do it for sure not. But if it really does come from God, so hey, maybe, maybe, this is, maybe I don't know what's going on in the world. Maybe I don't know what God is. Maybe it could be that there is something to this business. You know, maybe God really is creating me, and I really have a purpose in the world. And maybe, you know, the filling is just the beginning. Maybe it's only just, a, you know, just something that helps me connect myself to my true potential all the time. Maybe. Maybe not. Every, if a person's a, an ox or a goat, you know, he's got a, a, a person's a sheep, eh, you know, there's nothing to work with. I mean, there's no questions in life. Just, uh, Ukam Mavor, like it's explained, all of this is explained. Ukam Mavor. Huh? Ukam Mavor. Oh yes, this is what I want to explain. Listen, please. What I want to do is learn the class like this from now. Listen to guys. Make numbers down the side of the page. Make numbers on the side of the page. Then, when I'm giving the class, as soon as you get to a word you don't know, put 
a number there, or even when it, if I explain a word, put the number, and then put the translation next to the number. If you can't, we, we, I do that in Gemara, but it's not. It doesn't work. Okay, so then another way is like this. As soon as you, yeah, as soon as you come to a word that you don't know, if I went over the word and you didn't get the word, put a little mark over the word, a little dot, a little star, a little turkey. I remember when I was a kid in the second grade, you would you get a good right, right answer. You would stick a turkey on your forehead. Oh, man, what was that teacher? Put a picture of something over it. After class, I will, with Hashem's help, translate the word. Okay, and then like a little dot over the word, and we go a little bit smoother. Okay? Let's try it. We'll try it one time. No, 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 you have to be, you have to be optimistic. That's not as soon as we finish it. Well, you have to be optimistic. It'll take three minutes. Three minutes. What are we doing in the Chazar? What? Three minutes. We'll try it. Okay, let's go, come on. What? How will it work? When you don't know a word, you, you copy down the words now. Copy down. If you happen to miss a word, then you can ask one time. Miss a word. But if you miss a word, you put a little dot over it. After class, I'll translate all the words. That you missed. You see, it'll take you, it'll take you three minutes. Why don't I just give a copy of, of the complete translation after lunch? Too. We can do that also, but other than sometimes you won't come, sometimes more people. Sometimes. So the days <coughs> I'm not here. What, the words that they don't get, or the days that I don't make it, is oh. that which one? Oh. Let's go. We'll come aboard like it's explained. That, <coughs> that I'm cuffed pit. <coughs> Who it is, the Dakot, is a, a fine animal. I'll call punning in any case. I'll call punning in any case. In other words, it's an animal, but it's a fine animal. It's a refined animal. It doesn't make you so much problems. Fine animal. Right? Some people are like they want, they have big pleasures in life, they have big goals in life. Some people are like, oh, sheep, you know, they take your life easy. We'll come aboard like it's explained. Ba'arichut in long length. The Kuntras, and <coughs> this is the name of a book, the Kuntras Hatafila, in the, how do you say, pamphlet of prayer. This is a book which was written by the fifth Rebbe of Chabad, the Rebbe Rashab, when he opened up, shortly after he opened up the yeshiva of Chabad, Tom Chetamimi, when he established the whole system of the Chabad yeshivas where they learn Hasidut as part of the day. They learn these Kabbalistic ideas to bring them down into the physical world. They learn part of the day. He wrote four books. He wrote Kudras of Tefillah, the pamphlet of prayer, the pamphlet of service of God, the pamphlet of um, Eitz Chaim. It's called the, the, the Tree of Life. That talks about the importance of learning about the upper worlds. And Kuntras Umayan, which talks about basically where money comes from, where life comes from. Where... Okay, let's go. Tough, tough race sound. That's the year. Tough race sound is the year. Tough race sound, which, which is what's tough race sound? Tough race sound is 1900. I'm not mistaken. Tough race sound. Huh? Is that right? Is that right? Tough. Yeah. And this is Sha'omar, what it says, quote, I share that Takrivu you will sacrifice at Korbanchem your sacrifice. The first one is a verb, the second one is a noun. First one is doing something, Takrivu, you will sacrifice at Korbanchem your Sacrifice your animal. What does it mean? Your, your animal. Everybody has to do their own way, their own animal. Everybody has a different animal. Takrivu et korban chem. You have to make your own animal close to God. That's called sacrificing. He may behold. Okay, now we're going to get into the details. He may behold. How are you going to make your animal come close to God? You'll see. He may be old. 
So Rebbe's going to tell us how to do it. How to get close to God. Ready? In the sacrifice. By the way, coming close to God is not the, uh, it's not the, that's only step number one, or maybe step number two. That's only a preparation for bigger things. He may be whole, but Korban, in the physical sacrifice, who it is, she may be in, that they bring. Behema, animal. Gashmi, a physical animal. Al, an. Gabi, top of. Ham, yuzbeach. On top of the altar. And there was a fire <coughs> from above. <coughs> there was fire that came down from above. <coughs> what was the base of Midrash? The base of Midrash was not your ordinary synagogue. First of all, they used to bring animals in there. They used to kill animals. That you don't see very often. Secondly, they had a choir that was singing all the time, Levites. Then they also had a band that was playing all the time. Then they had the Kohanim. The Kohanim were running around doing all sorts of services and, and sacrificing the animals and bringing them on the altar. Right? The, the, sacrifice, the, the actual slaughtering could be done by the woman, but they would... There would be a, the sad. They would put, putting these animals on the altar, and there was that was only on the outside altar. Then there was an inside altar where there was the incense. There was a, a menorah where they would light the menorah in the morning. There's all sorts of things going on in, 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 the, in the holy temple. But one of the most weird things that was going on in the temple was is there was fire that came down from heaven and devoured the sacrifices. Came down from heaven. Now that's a thing you sure don't see every day. Once in a while, maybe somebody brings a dog or something into the show. So you have an animal in the show. And there's a lot of times that people in the show act like animals. So you have animals in the show. And sometimes they sing. Once in a while, they're singing. Right? You go to a Chabad show. They're going to a. Right? They sing. A, you know, a lot of times in the service, in a lot of the synagogues, people sing. The Sephardic shows, the Shkenazi, the people sing. Beautiful. Instruments you don't find that often. You don't find them instruments. But once in a while, maybe they have a party, they have a sun party. But fire coming down from heaven on top of the place where they read from the ark, never. You never said, unless there's an electrical shortage, something happens, there's no such thing as fire coming down from heaven. It doesn't happen. And at the base of Midrash, there it was. There was actually fire that came down from heaven and devoured the sacrifices. I thought the fire was there, the smoke went up to heaven. Very good. We, there was a commandment to bring fire from below. We had to make our own fire. But that did not detract from the fact that God also made His fire. And there was fire that came down from heaven and devoured the sacrifices. We'll talk about this. There's part of it that God does, and there's part of it that we do. The part that God does, we're going to learn, that's what's called the godly soul. That a person's natural connection and excitement and love and awe for the Creator. It's there. It's there. Whether you want it or not, whether you deny it or not, it's there. And it's like a, a person has a grandmother. Your grandmother, you can believe in your grandmother, you can not believe, but you got a grandmother. She's there, she's there. Right? God is really there. And He's creating us. But not only is He creating us, He's reacting to what we do. This is a very, very deep and bizarre idea. Right? The Jewish people have something that they're trying to tell to the world that people don't want to listen. The God who is creating you and the God who is creating the world constantly cares about what you do and will react to what you do. And that's what happened. There was a fire that actually came down from heaven. And the fire that came down from heaven was not just a reaction. It was God beginning. He was, how do you say, starting the whole thing off. He was starting it off. Right, for a person, in order for a person to arouse, to get excited about God, first of all, the person has to be inspired. Something has to inspire him. Who starts off? God has to start off. God has to start off. I mean, God starts off already because He creates us. So He creates us from nothing. So for sure God starts everything. 
Right? God gives us a brain. He creates our brain every second. He creates our emotions every single second. He creates everything, but He gives us the most amazing gift in the world, which is called free choice. Every person has this amazing thing that they can actually choose. We're human beings. We can choose. And it's an amazing gift that God gives us. But nevertheless, we do choose. And when we choose the right thing, God reacts. But before God reacts to what we do, as He also starts the whole thing off. So that ends up God does the whole business. He does everything. All we do is we choose freely. Right? And that's also Hashem. That the whole thing is totally not understandable. But that's the fact. That's the way it is. Amazing, amazing thing. The God created this thing and creates every second. This amazing creation called man. Right? And man actually is a free agent. You can, you can do what you want. You're free. You, know, you want to deny God. You make mistakes. No problem. God forbid. But if you want to do what's true, you want to do what's right, as that's free choice. You can do it. That's what a man is. A man is a creation that can do what is right. Choose. Choose to do what's right. And choose to, all the other creatures can't choose. Angels don't choose. Animals don't choose. We can actually choose. And because we have this power of choice, we can get to a higher level of right and a higher level of meaning and a higher level of, of blessing. That's the whole, what the Bible is about. So here we are. Trying to bless the world, bring blessing to the world. Good, here we go. So it starts off like this. God begins and He has a fire that comes down from heaven. Fire that comes down from heaven. Maybe, okay, where are we? Okay, this is it. He may behold. It started over from the beginning. First word of mine is I share. He may behold. The Corban. No, sir. Huh? No, whereas Al Yabe Hamiz Beya. Yeah, good, okay. Let's start off from this line. He may behold, okay? Beha Korban, in the sacrifice, Hagashmi, physical, who it was, Shemeviim, that they brought, Behema, animal, Gashmi, a physical animal, who it is that they bring. That's right, who it is, in the sacrifice, what did they do, Shemeviim, they brought. That they brought. Shemeviim, that they brought, that there was brought. Behema, an animal. So here we are, you have a dove. Gashmi, we're at the end of the line. That's what I'm on. You have it? Mm -hmm. You sure? Mm -hmm. Gashmi, physical. Al, on Gabi, top of him, is behemoth, the altar. The haya, and there was. Ha'esh, fire. Shilamayla, from above. Uke de Isa, and like it is brought down. And like it is brought. Beyoma. What's Yoma mean? It's a chapter. It's a, it's a, it's a tractate. It's a whole tractate of Gomorrah. In Yoma, the Gomorrah Yoma. Yoma talks, it's a, a tractate that talks about uh, Yom Kippur. Page Chaf Aleph, Amu Beis, the second side of page 21. Revutza, it says over there like this. Rev, quote, Revutza, it was crouching. There was fire that came down from heaven. Ravutsa crouching, you know what crouching means? Crouching, ka'arie, like a lion. End quote. And then Rashi explains, he's like this. Gachelis, a flame, like a flaming coal, a flame. Shenafla, that fell. Min shamayim from heaven. Biamei, in the days of... Shlomo King Solomon. For you saw, and it was Al An. What is Gachel? It's like a flame, a flame, like a you know, like a flaming coal, or a, you know, a Gachelus. So it means like a flame, a piece of flame that fell from heaven in the days of King Solomon. For you saw, and it was. Al on Hamizbeach on the altar. That's what Rashi said. Uba Zohar and in the Zohar, Ita is brought. Zohar is a Kabbalistic book, right? The Zohar. It's brought. Ita is brought. Quote: Aryeh, a lion, to Achel that ate, that devoured. 
Korbanin sacrifices. What is that meant to mean? Huh? What is that meant to mean? What? What did we say? What, what did we say is that the lion? What? What did we say before it was crouching like a lion? Oh, the flame. The flame. There was a flame that came down from heaven. It was crouching like a lion. And it ate up the sacrifices. That wasn't the holy temple. All of them. Huh? All of them. Yeah, that's what it says. There, here we go. And interestingly enough, in, 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 there's a Mishnah in Pirkei Avot that says that there were ten miracles in the Beit HaMikdash, and it doesn't list this as one of them. Oh, no. It doesn't list this as one of them. In other words, this is like a sort of a normal thing. You go into the Beit HaMikdash, ah, the same old line. He may be old, Kamokin, similarly, who is Ba'avoda, in the service. The nefesh and the soul, Adam of man. It was a very interesting historical fact that there was a temple and there used to be a fire in the shape of a lion that was over the altar and it would devour all the sacrifices. Very interesting. But so it is also. Kamokin, you with me? Dog, you sure you with me or not? Yes? He may be old. Kamokin, so it is. What's too fast to say something? Is it too fast? You sure? He may be old. Come on, came similarly. Who oh, it is? Pavod and service. Benefit is on the soul of man. Hare, behold. Yesh, there is a fire. Shalomayla. From above. What is this fire? That's, when we, we said this whole chapter is talking about how to make yourself into a holy temple. The main thing of the holy temple was there were sacrifices. You, you've already got the sacrifice, you already have the animal, and you also have the fire. A complete, your own complete holy temple kit. Right? You've got it. You have your body, that's like the stones. You have the animal, and now you have the fire. All you have to do is plug it in. And it starts to work. Buy the batteries. You have fire that comes from above. What is this fire? Who it is? Harishfe, the flames. Age of fire. Ship and nefesh, which are in the soul. Ha'elokis, godly soul. O and like the saying, What's the other one? Uh, 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 Godly. <clears throat> or like the saying. What's the saying? Quote. Rishafeha. This is, comes from the Song of Songs. Shir Hashirim. King Solomon is singing this love song to God. And God is also singing, singing a love song. He's quoting God. is what God says <coughs> to the Jewish people. Singing the song. This is the, what's called the Shira Shirin, the Song of Songs, the, the, the what I call it, the, the Poem of Poems. Kamai were like the saying, quote, Rishafeha, her flames. Rishafe are flames, ash of fire. Shalahevet, what's the word Shalahevet? Shalahevet is also like a flame. Is there a better word for a flame? Another word for a flame? Love. A synonym? No. A flame, like a, you say, a tongue. What? Huh? There's a tongue of fire, a flame of fire, a, a something of fire. Bull. A what? Uh, it's a tongue of fire. A tongue of fire, a, a ring of fire, a this of fire. He's going to look for the. What? Ball of fire. A ball of fire. It's not a ball of fire. I've never heard of a tongue of fire. Yeah, a tongue. A tongue, sure, a tongue of fire, sure. It reaches, yeah. Okay. Huh? Anyway, what it is, is a... A uh, I'll have to say the same word again. It's a flame of fire. Shall I have it? A flame. Another word for flame. Shall I have it? A flame. Yud K of God. End quote. Every single Jew has a flame for God. Every Jew. 
That's what makes a Jew a Jew. A Jew has a flame, a burning flame inside of him. It bothers him. A flame for God. You go to the most not religious Jew in the world, and you say, you know God exists, you know. They'll say, he doesn't exist. You're a liar, a cheat, it's not so. It's not just a lie. People are trying to put it over. It's a trick to make money. And you rabbis, and then, then, right? You go up to a non-religious, non-Jew. And you say, you know, God really exists. He says, okay, you know, believe what you want. No problem. Right? A Jew is excited. If he's against, he's really against. Right? Here you have it with Judaism. You have a reformed Jew. Uh, a Reconstructionist Jew. What's reconstruction? They don't believe in God. They don't believe in the Torah. They don't believe in it. So why are you calling yourself a Jew? I'm a Jew? What do you mean? I'm just as good a Jew as you? Right? Who well, ever heard of such like that? Right? A Catholic doesn't do anything in church. Wow. Never goes to church, never does anything. I'm a reformed Catholic. He calls himself a different religion. He's not a Catholic. He's a different something. Else. Right? A guy who doesn't believe in the religion, a Buddhist, place. he doesn't believe in the and you know their their thing, so he's not a Buddhist anymore. He's uh, he's out, right? He's just out. Is that part? Here, this person says, "No, I'm just as good as you." Judaism is important to them, right? And it is. It really is truly important. Right? I'm a reconstructionist Jew. I'm a reform Jew. I'm just as good as you as you. Don't. And, and in a way, it's true. In a way, it's true, right? Inside, they're just as good as Jews as everybody else. You can't measure what a good Jew imagine. Maybe what they do, or what they think, and what they say is not in tune with what a serious Jew would do. You look into the Torah, see if it's really true. If God really gave it, then you do it. That's what a Jew is supposed to be. But inside, is that's what the Rebbe is saying. Every single Jew has a flame, a fire, that he wants to be a Jew. He wants to be close to God. Maybe he doesn't call it God like your God. He doesn't want a God to give the Torah. He doesn't believe in a God that limits you. Right? My God is a God of meaning, of friendship, of love, of brotherhood, of... I don't know about unity, of life. Right? These are all true. These things are true. But right? God is life and is unity. And love. But God also has another side to him. He creates the world very exactly. He took the Jews out of Egypt. He told the Jews exactly what he wants them to do. But they have to be a special example. Jews are supposed to keep Shabbos. There's, the Shabbos is different from all the other days of the week. Which is not like what science says. Science says every day is what's the difference between Shabbos and another day. Right? Right? A test, make a test on the wind of Shabbos and the time of Shabbos and something like that. The clock, wait, what about Greenwich or something? See if there's a different time feeling. No, no difference. Judaism says there's a difference. Right? There's a difference. There's a difference between who says it? God, the creator of the world says it. It says every Jew's Jewish soul inside feels somewhere down deep that not only is it really true, that this is really exciting. This is the meaning of life. This is the source of life. That's what's called fire. Every Jew has a godly soul, which is a flaming fire. The Eta, and it's brought down. The Midrash Rabba. It's brought down, and you have this. The, the, yeah? the, the, Midrash Rabba. It's a book called Midrash Rabba. Huvan, it's brought. The Yalkut, and a book that's called Yalkut, Yalkut Shemoni. It says over there. Ke'esh, it's like fire. Shalomayla from above. She'en ha'mayim, that water will not. Mechabim, how do you say, to extinguish. Mechabim means to extinguish. Put out. Oto it. Mechabah, he said. Huh? Mechabah? Mechabah? Mechabin will not extinguish. Where? What? What happened? What did I do? Yeah, this, this, you this, skipped this, the line? Yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 right. I skipped a whole bunch of lines. I skipped them on. Okay. It took, so I talked about getting excited. I'm getting excited. I skipped lines. Okay. She'en ha'esh. Let's go. We're back to the, the line. ends with the word lamayim. She'en ha'esh, that water will not, that fire will not mechabim, be put out lamayim by water. This fire will not be put out by water. Ve'en ha'mayim, and there is no water 
mechabim that will put out la'esh, this fire. Language, that's how we understand it. The sentence, it's very not clear. But it says, the simple meaning is there's no fire that will put out the water and no water will put out the fire. But it means the water, there is no water that will put out this fire in the Jewish soul. What type of water might you think would put out the fire of the soul? What, what type of water? It doesn't make any sense. We'll see. Hainu namely, it's not telling you don't worry about going to the mikvah. It's not going to put out your Jewish soul. Right? We're not talking about it. We're talking about a different type of water. Huh? What did you say, Doug? We'll see. We'll see. We'll, no, no, no. We'll see. I know, namely... Okay, I'm on the right line yet. I know, namely, Shabbatava, that in the nature, Hanefesh, the soul, Elohim's godly, Hare, behold, Yesh, there is, bow in it, Rishve, Eish, flames of fire, Ha'ahava, of love, Lelokus to God. And this flame of fire, who is the Dumas like? Eish, fire, Shalomayla from above. She'en, that there is not Hamayim water. There is no water. Mechabim, that can extinguish Oto it. No water can extinguish. What type of water? What are we talking about? What's this water? The fire we know. <coughs> we know what the fire is. There was a fire that came down in the temple. It came down from heaven and there's a fire inside of each one of our souls. An interest and a longing and a desire for the truth, for God. Every single Jew. And there's no water that can put it out. What, what, what type of water might you think could put it out? That the Rebbe is saying, don't worry. Listen to this. Listen to this, Rabbis. Bahamayim in the water. Okay, you with me, Dobby? Yeah. You sure? I'm sure. Good. Bahamayim in the water. Hey, they are. Mayim Rabi. Turbulent waters. Rabi means a lot. A lot of water. A lot. But what it means? Turbulent waters. You ever see pictures of a flood? Have you ever seen such a thing? A flood? You ever see pictures? Terrible. Frightening. Frightening. Uh, you see pictures of floods. Just a frightening thing. I mean, it's like fire. Just like you can't control it. Like when dams break sometimes. Rivers overflow. Washes away. I saw once in, what is it, the National Geographic. We're talking about catastrophes of nature or something like that. You see floods just, you know, whole huge torrents of water. I guess they haven't got any pictures of, of these tsunamis, of these tidal waves come. Huge waves that come. But the water comes, it's like millions of tons of water. You have no chance whatsoever. The strongest person in the world, no building can stand up against it. Right? Just, just washes everything away. Just, just washes, just uproots everything, uproots trees, and everything just gone. So that's my Robin, turbulent waters. Just turbulent waters cannot put out once in a while you see, there's a picture, you see a drawing of a tempest at sea, you know, and in the sea they have a tempest or a cyclone or whatever it's called, hurricanes at sea. Just, you know, these huge, massive waves and a little ship floundering in the middle of nowhere in the dark black, you know, black of sea, you know, just miles of water underneath them, water all around them, just alone, you know, the elements, you know, their only hope is the heavens, you know, it's the only thing that keeps them above, they just have to keep... And just these frightening things. It says the world is the same thing. Frightening place. There's frightening, terrible, turbulent waters in the world. The world is a very, very frightening place. Right? A person can think, well, everything is against me. All the forces of nature. There is no reason that people, no wonder that people go so well. And the Jews are supposed to stand against The Jews are supposed to stand against nature and transform nature. I got transform a tidal wave. Impossible. Says the Rebbe, you know it, you're right. It's impossible for you, but it is definitely possible for God, and that Hashem will help. He wants you to do it. He wants you to do it. Is it an impossible task? Yes. 
But with Hashem, nothing is impossible. It says, because every Jew has this little part of God inside of him, he has the godly soul, and this godly soul is like fire, and the water cannot put it out. What type of water might you think could put it out? Mayim Rabin. What's called turbulent waters. Okay, W, you with me? Yeah. Turbulent. What is a turbulent waters? The reboy in many. Hatirdos. I didn't say, but it bothers me. What is a better word? Troubles. Huh? Troubles. Tr troubles, the confusions. The tirdos and the bothers and the, and the confusions. Haparnas of making money. Money. You guys are young, you don't know. Right? You have a family and you have to pay money. You know, in America, people get fired from their jobs. They get fired from their jobs, they get depressed, they go crazy. As everyone said that anti-Semitism, there's a lot of reasons for anti-Semitism, but the final thing that really brings it to action is money. People don't have money, they don't have jobs, they feel miserable with life. And somebody stands up and says, you know, why, 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 why you feel so miserable? Because of the Jews. Oh, now we got it. Now we understand. And it was all the problem with Jews, it was so clear. And they go and they burn and they this and they, they're happy. Oh, we can go and they're doing, we're getting rid of the enemy. Right? We're like doctors, we're getting rid of the, 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 the diseased cells. Right? Oh, they feel so good. They answer, they're nothing, they, 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 after their record, they, nothing happens. They don't have any money, they don't have anything. Right? This is, but nevertheless, inside of us is also the same thing. Inside of us, there's a, a huge nature. You say, a, a pogrom that says, get the little Jew inside. The, 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 that's what's wrong with you. Is you're, you're like God. Forget about God. Forget about it. It doesn't exist. That's what wrecked the whole world. Right? That's what wrecked everything. This feeling of God inside of you. Every Jew has this feeling of anti-godliness. Right? But on the other hand, he has a little feeling of godliness also. Like you say, the reformed rabbi. Right? Little friend, guy's reformed. I'm kind of rabbi. He's a rabbi. I'm going to be reformed. Doesn't make any sense. That's a Jew. That's what a Jew is. On one hand, he has a fire for God, and on the other hand, he has a nature. She has. Huh? She has a Who does? The reformed rabbi. Oh, she does. <laughs> Parnasa. A tyrannous of Parnasa. O bilbulim and confusions. Another word for confusion. Bilbulim is confusion. Huh? What's tyrannous? Tyrannous means, I asked you to please be attention, though. Tyrannous means confusions, bothers. Tyrannous. A person is mutrad, means he's, he's all confused. Tyrannous, things that bother you. Parnas. U bilbulim, another word for confusions. Bilbulim is showing other confusions. But tyrannous shown us and different bothers. The, the words are interchangeable. Hamilbalbulim, that confuse a person. The Torah in Torah and avoid and serving God. Right? All of a sudden the phone rings, all of a sudden he doesn't feel good, all of a sudden he has to turn off the lights, all of a sudden there's somebody at the door, all of a sudden his boss is calling, all of a sudden his wife wants something, all of a sudden his kids want something, all of a sudden, right? His next door neighbor is complaining, a million problems come. Right? Millions of problems all the time. He loses his wallet. What the heck? What's going on? Where's my show? Where's my what? Where's my. My pen, I, who took my pen? Where is my pen? I can't find this. What do you mean? It's in your pocket. Oh, yeah, yes, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean it's in my pocket. It's funny, it leaked. It's all over this thing. I gotta change my shirt now, and I gotta go, and I'm in a hurry, and I can't. And he gets to the bus, and he hasn't got any money. He lost his wallet, and he gets, he gets back home, and he realizes it was just in a different pocket. All sorts of confusions all the time. We need to confuse a person. One of those confusions also comes from inside. But from inside, a person gets angry, a person gets depressed, a person has also desires. These things confuse a person. So what? They confuse them. But nevertheless, and there's always the world is always calling you. It's always threatening you. Don't be a religious Jew. Everybody's going to laugh at you. Everyone will hate you. They'll all hate you. Right? They'll beat you up in the streets. You have to be normal like everybody else. Right? Don't wear a kippah. Don't wear tzitzit. That's it. 
Because if you do, everybody's going to see you, and they'll all laugh at you. Right? You see, they don't laugh at anybody else, but really what happens is you put on tzitzes, and everybody says, ah, they all laugh at you. It works. They do it. They really do laugh at you. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry. I didn't know it was a mistake. I remember the first time I put on a kippah. The first time I put on a kippah. Ever. Ever. I was already in my 20s. I had finished university. I did all sorts of things, you know, I didn't care what people thought, until I decided to put on a kippah. And all of a sudden, I was so worried about what everybody thought. Right? I said, today I'm going to do it. Right? Nobody knew me. I didn't know they didn't know me from no one. What did they care? I could go without any clothes on in the street. I put on a kippah, no way. Right? No way. I remember, how did I finally do it? So it was paranoia. How did I finally do it? I waited till 4 o'clock in the morning. I lived on this big intersection. I waited. There was nobody in the streets at all. I walked, took the keeper in my hand pocket. I walked to the middle of the street, stood in the middle of the intersection. Right? There was only me and the light turning, right? <laughs> Colored. So I, went, I took, took the keeper out of my pocket, put it on my head, took my hand down, all this, took it off. <laughs> Then after that, I thought, hey, maybe it's not so bad. And I started wearing it, and then I didn't care what it was. And I remember I was so apprehensive. I had it so much in my mind. What are people going to say? There was no people. I had to make sure there was nobody there. No, not a cat, not even a mouse out there. <laughs> Here we go. says that there's all sorts of problems inside and outside. Ubechal zeb, but nevertheless, he may behold, gam also, Hanaharos rivers, lo will not, yishtafuha, wash it away. It's another passage from Song of Songs, another sentence. Rivers cannot wash it away. Lefi, because, because why? Because, Huh? That's why. Why? We're on the next page. Because the Rosh Peyesh that is flame in fire. Because the. The Rish Peyesh. I'm sorry, the Rish Peyesh that the flame in fire. Okay? Ahava of love. Shibbanefeshalokhis of the godly soul. What is this flaming fire? Love. Godly love. You know what love is? You have any idea what love is? Love? People have love. Some people don't have any. The people that aren't like the sheep we had before. They don't have any emotions about anything. I love steak. Love steak. Some people love money. Right? Everybody loves themselves. You know, we have no idea how much we love ourselves. But if you hear somebody speaking, that, that dove. He's such a fool. He's such a he's got such a big nose. It's just terrible. This dove is a little dove. It's a big nose. He says, yeah, the dove green bird is oh. It's not talking about me. It's talking about somebody else. Okay? No, it's okay. I don't mind. Right? <laughs> then after that they said, no, his name is last name is not green bird. You're talking about somebody else. Right? It's talking about the dove, the guy in the, you know, in the in or to me, man. Learns an or to me. Right, it's me, right? All of a sudden, the artist said, he says, he doesn't learn what to make him. I know the guy. He's, 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 he's 20 years old. And he learns it. Oh, I feel bad. Right? Huh? What happens? That's your ego. People don't know much they love themselves. I'm telling you, I have a cousin. He was a free, happy-go-lucky guy. Could care about nothing. Until one day, somebody stole his Corvette. Stole his Corvette from his house. And it was insured. It was insured. He got the whole thing back. But it shook him up so much. He was in the game of love. Eh, eh. Like, what? And you worry. He stole his Corvette. Woke up in the morning, his Corvette was gone. That's it. He changed his whole life. Bought himself a shop, got, got a permit. Wow. Moved his room to the front of the house. Right? The window was always open. So you could hear somebody put all sorts of sirens and things like that on his car. Plenty of right? Okay, that's an exaggerated case, but everybody does it. So now with your Corvette, because we don't have a Corvette. You see, somebody steals your Corvette. You see what you do. <laughs> you like a Corvette, you know. But to me, it doesn't talk so much a Corvette. I had a Corvette. It's nice. Yeah, it has all that. You know, and you feel bad. It's, it's a, worth a lot of money. You know, you feel bad if somebody takes it. That's not, you know, you're going to move your house. You see, you'll see. 
So it's not your Corvette, so it's your, your name, your reputation, your, 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 something, right? Somebody looks at you wrong. Everybody has their thing. It says, because, but nevertheless, no matter how many personality problems or physical problems or real problems or, God forbid, health problems or money problems or a person has, you should know that the, that the soul, that the flame and fire of love, which is in your godly soul, who is the Duma, similar to age, fire, shalom, I from above. That in a mayim, that water cannot mechabim extinguish ota it. Good? And not only can the troubles of the world and the pressures of the world not put out your Jewish soul, can never extinguish it, God forbid, but even more, bazeh in this, in this fire, bazeh, write this down, Dovi, bazeh in this fire, in this fire, Tzorich Liot has to be Ha the coming close. The tra let's put, tra put the Ha in this case the transformation. Put the word transformation in this case. The transformation shall of Hanefesh is the animal soul. One more line. Shekam, that also, who it? Yeah, will be low to it. Ahava, does the animal soul also will come to have Ahava love Lelokus to God? That's what we call before transformation, right? Eshapcha, that your animal soul will come to enjoy doing what God wants. Eskafia. Huh? Eskafia means to force yourself. That's Eskafia. And as hapcha means enjoying it. Next level. That's the next level. That also your animal soul will enjoy, will have love for God. Ukomoshe Ketuv, like we say it every day, at least twice a day, quote, Ve'ahavta you should love. Et havaya God. Elokecha your God. Bechol lovavacha. With all of your heart. At first glance, there's a spelling error over here. It should have said, Bechal li Bechal. Bechal li Bechal. What is it? Levav Bechal with two bases? Why does it say two bases? It says, Omer, as all the rabbis say, Bishnei Yitzarecha, with both of your, huh? Right, with both of your personalities, if you want to go with both of your hearts. Yitzarecha means your. You say your desires, your imaginations. Talk about it. We'll talk about them. Let's just five more words. Shagam that also. Hanefesh Abaham is the animal soul. Yehiyah will be. Lo to it. Ava love the locus to God. And with that same animal that loves to watch a movie, or that loves to write to friends on email. Or that loves to make money, or that loves to do all these things that are very nice. It's good. I mean, I guess if the movie is a good movie, I, 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 a normal movie, most movies are just 99% of them are a total waste of time. And the other ones are 90% waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'll, there's a little bit something, uh, a little less of it. But the, 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 people like it. People like sports. Right? They go, 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 He's got it. He's got the ball. That same excitement that people have for money, that they have for sports, they have for enjoyment, they have for hearing a, a, a good word, a praise, you know, oh, you're really smart, oh, the person loves it. Love to hear it. That's good. It's natural. What's wrong with that? But that same feeling and love you can have for your creator. Now, who's creating all these good things? God is creating them all. Right? That we can transform everything. You can enjoy hearing praise, but maybe you'll enjoy giving praise more. And you won't just give praise in order to, how do you say, flatter someone that is going to give you something. Just praising people. You know, say, say good things about people. Hey, that's a godly thing. That's a good thing. Right? Instead of doing it for yourself, you do things for the creator of the universe. Right? Sports, instead of going and enjoying the sports game, you know, all these Jews come to the sports game. All these Jews come to the sports game. 
you say, hey, this is a good chance. Jews come to the sports game. I can put the phone on these people. Right? And it's kind of like, yeah, Judaism. And then the sports game. Right? People are interested in sports. Maybe if I learn about you know, the batting average of everybody, I can talk to these people. I have what to talk about. Would you like to put on the fill-in, sir? He says, I don't put on the fill-in. He says, well, you know, uh, yesterday Phil Rizzuto, he, he put on, a, he batted a 50, uh, 475 home runs. You know, he says, oh, how would you know that? He says, because I like, you know what, I'll put on the fill-in. You can use, everything can be used for serving God. Right, the people who... You can do this to our football stadium? Huh? You can do this to our football stadium? I think, yeah. The Red was against doing it in the Olympics. But as far as I know, in football, if they'll allow you to do it in, in sports, I don't know. Right? If they'll allow you to do it, you can do it. What I'm saying is, is that instead of seeing the little picture of just thinking about yourself all the time, your godly soul comes to see the big picture. It sees the Creator. So you, stop, and you end up that you like people more. You don't think about yourself so much. You're not so touchy all the time. What people think about me, what they say about me, right? And people did bad things to you in the past, you can forget it. It's no big deal. Right? You can get over it. You're more, you can use your mind more. Your emotions are less involved in stupid things that mean nothing. Right? You come to start to love God. But that's even a, a higher level of just realizing that God exists and that He likes you, He cares for you. You can actually have love for God. You just want to care about what Hashem wants. That's called a corporate sacrifice, coming closer to God. As God willing, we'll talk about more on...